now recognizes the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Griffin, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank the, uh, I appreciate the commissioners uh, being here today, and it's good to be in the room with witnesses and actually able to look folks uh, in the eye. So thank you all very much. Uh, to provide protection against regulatory overreach, the backfit rule requires that the NRC must conduct a cost-benefit analysis to justify the imposition of a modification on an NRC license. The proposed modification can only be imposed if the cost-benefit analysis establishes that establishes that there is a su substantial increase in safety. Chairman Hansen, for several years, the NRC has been working on updating its guidance document on the backfit rule to provide greater clarity to both the NRC staff and licensees on implementation of the rule. The staff provided its proposed update to the guidance document to the commission in March of this year. When will the commission finalize its votes on the guidance document? Uh, Thank you, uh, Congressman Griffith. Um, as you noted, it's before the commission. We're each taking uh, a look at it. Certainly the backfit issue, I can tell you personally, is new to me uh, coming onto the commission. And so uh, it's something that I look forward to taking a close look at. I, I don't know. Well, the main thing is how long do you think it's going to take before you get it finalized? Is that going to be two months, three months, six months? I mean, I'm not going to hold you to it. I'm just getting an idea or five years. <laughs> uh, I'm not aware of a particular uh, um, deadline on that, of course, each of us um, uh, prioritizes our work and when there's a critical mass, in this case, a critical mass of three, then, uh, then these issues uh, are, are resolved. All right, well, let me move on. Uh, I've got some other questions on that. Commissioner Wright, it's my understanding that the proposed revisions to this guidance include a substantial discussion on the concept of forward fitting, which occurs when the NRC conditions its approval of a licensee requested licensing action on the licensee's compliance with a new requirement that was not part of the request. In other words, they make a request to make a change that they think is good for safety uh, and, and efficiency, and then uh, forward fitting would say, well, we're gonna add on some extra things. That being said, do you agree that without additional guidance on when the NRC may impose a forward fit, licensees may be disincentivized from pursuing licensing actions, including ones that may actually improve the plant performance if they run the risk of being forced to comply with additional new requirements that was not within the scope of their request? So I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, the, uh, uh, and we've got to stay within our mission, okay? I'm, I've umpired baseball for almost 50 years, okay? Um, and I use the analogy that the, our mission is that strike zone right over home plate, right? And everything that we do has to go right to the to our mission which is to is reasonable assurance right um, so in the forward fit policy you know it's designed to add discipline to the process um, imposing some new requirements or, or staff interpretations requirements as a condition um, I, so it's intended to ensure that these new requirements have a direct relationship to the proposed action um, as but as you know sometimes they can overstep bounds, and, and that has happened. You know that, I know that as well, so we're not gonna hide behind that. Um, uh, but I think that, uh, um, that the licensee, if he can maintain reasonable assurance that, you know, um, then he's met his mission and we should approve it. You know, the quite honest, there's an example I'll give you. It's, you know, when the licensee proposes the use of an older version of a, a design code um, that's currently approved by the NRC but the staff wants to require a, new, a newer version of that code, right? Um, so the staff's gotta be able to demonstrate that, that's, that, that that's, there's something in that newer code that absolutely is essential, right? Uh, and if they can't do that, then they have to let the licensee, you know, use the older code. Uh, yeah. that, that's the way to go. And my concern in other uh, arenas, in other fields, we've seen where regulations of that set or that nature where people are afraid, it creates a situation in industries where they just won't come in and ask to make any changes uh, because they're afraid additional, more expensive changes will be added onto them that have nothing to do with the requested change, and so that's a real problem. So it sounds like to me you would be in support of clarifying the guidance documents so that it fits that mold that you were just talking about. Am I correct in that? Correct, yeah, and I, by, by the way, I did take the backfit training uh, that was offered by the staff, so I uh, did it very early. 
Um, and I do think that, that the, the, the document, the, the, what is before us that we're considering, I don't think it's too far away. Um, you know, so, uh, I won't say where we all are in it, but it's pretty yes, close. All right. I appreciate it, and I'll, con I'll continue to keep an eye on this. Thank you so much for your time, and I yield back. <laughs>